Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today, including Max Boltman, standing by from Detroit. Brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Tomorrow, the G-Man take on Victoria in Langley. Puck drops at 7.30. Get your tickets now at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox just before we get to uh, Max. Brandon in Langley. Um, is it time to cancel my ticket package? Like you all said, it looked like they were about to do the responsible thing and start to build a young team through the draft. Then, bam! They trade away two high picks. This team is never going to go anywhere, and I'm beginning to slowly accept it. The owner thinks we're stupid. He only cares about his round one home date revenue. And Brandon goes on. You get the idea. Yeah. He's not happy. Uh, Red Wings sending Philip Heronic to Vancouver for a 2023 first rounder and a 2023 second rounder. Here to talk about it. From the Motor City, he covers the Red Wings for the Athletic. Max Boltman. How are you, Max? Thanks for doing this. Hey, gentlemen, my pleasure. I got to warn you, I'm not as charismatic as Drancer, but uh, I'll do my best for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sure you'll do fine, Max. Hey, what <laughs> what are the Canucks getting? Because, you know, we're up here in Canada. We pretend we know everything about hockey. But let's be honest here, folks. We don't know everything about Philip Hronik. What are they getting in this right shot defenseman? Well, I do think they're getting a, a two-way right shot defenseman in his prime, right? And I think it's it's more offensively inclined um Certainly, but I think this year some of the big strides Philip Pronick has made have been in becoming that that kind of true two way player. Now, what's interesting to me about this trade is he he's having this breakout while he's kind of moved into a second pair role for the Red Wings, right? As Moritz Sider has ascended, uh, he's taken on a, a huge workload, and I think it's freed up Philip Pronick uh, for that step. I'm really curious to see how it translates uh, in Vancouver. I don't know yet if, if if they've said whether they see him as playing on the top pair or the second pair there uh you know kind of in the shutdown role or in in kind of the uh maybe a little bit more sheltered or I mean, he plays 22 minutes he's never going to be sheltered but um you know what i mean so i i think that's very interesting to see he's had a breakout year he's he's scoring on a 50 point pace he's a really good player um and, and i i realize uh that the timing of it for the canucks is probably not uh sitting very well but but he is a very good hockey player so the Canucks give up a lot for him, a couple of draft yeah. picks. Most people in this town not in favor of that. Uh, he's the top score, top defenseman in Detroit in terms of points, second in ice time. There are a whole lot of positives there, uh, Max, and also just five points out of a playoff spot, same as Ottawa, and they went out and got a defenseman yesterday. Why was this guy available? I think two things stand out. Number one, the Red Wings are have faded over the last week. They've they've moved from a uh, playoff spot into the math. I think is now about ten percent for them. That's a tough a tough one. And, and I think the big thing, and, and I think this is going to be relevant for relevant for Vancouver too. Um, right now, at his current cap at four point four million, I think he's a steal. I think he's a really good player for that. Um, a year from now, if he keeps up this production, he's going to be due for a really big raise. And, and I think. The Red Wings had to be conscious of that. They're already going to have to do a new deal with Moritz Sider around the same time. Um, that, I think, is a, is a big peripheral thing, and, and I think it will be for the Canucks, too, and I think that's a big factor. Yeah, no question. His next contract in Vancouver is going to be a big one. That's a, a big reason. Max, uh, give us an update on uh, his injury status. He was hurt in Ottawa uh, Tuesday. Uh, what's uh, going on with his injury? How long is he out? Do you, can you give us any insight? I don't know. All they've told us is his upper body. I think I saw him in a sling leaving the game. He, he had something on over, but that's what it looked like to me. Um, I don't know if, if that's considered long-term. Derek Lalone had said it was something that he was dealing with even coming into that game. I find that interesting. I think that's probably a little bit reassuring if you're Vancouver because um, he did start that game and, and played that game through the first you know period and then some. Um, but they haven't told us what the specific injury is. I'm, I'm actually curious to see when he gets there because – uh, I, I thought he was going to you know at least miss the next game just based on him him leaving this one early. Yeah, well, and uh, Donnie showed a uh, clip of Ryan Reeves absolutely running him over yes. uh, uh, a while back. Did he ever end up with a concussion out of that? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, it was a big hit, but I think yeah. he dressed quickly after that. Um, he's a tough guy, man. I mean, for being six foot which, you know, we talk about like it's small because it's hockey, but he's a tough guy. He's, he's really gritty. I think that's an asset of his, a little bit of that piss and vinegar that, that I think you want, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but I, I don't know if that was ever a, a factor from the Reeves head. What's uh, your opinion or just the general opinion among Red Wings fans uh, about the job Steve Eisenman is doing? I, I think he has so much credibility here that 
um, his approval ratings have a certain floor. And I think, uh, you know, they might have been getting toward that floor at various points of this season when things weren't going very well. But I think that floor is still about 60, 70 percent approval. And that's a rare thing for general managers in this league. Um, I think it's it's an asset, especially when he's doing what he's trying to do, which is a really long rebuild. I think that's one of the contrasts you can kind of see in these two franchises, Detroit and Vancouver. I think you can argue they're not that far apart in terms of where they're at right now. I think Detroit's got the better farm system, but in terms of the, the players that are in the NHL right now, not that different, but I think the, the patience and in, in rebuilding yeah. uh, he gets is, does allow him to do a lot of different things. I think Vancouver's fans probably would like a little bit more of that. Um, but I, I do think it's a, it's a really interesting factor to see it play out. He, he's in year, I think four now mm-hmm. as, as GM. And I think most GMs by this point, it's getting a little itchy, not so much for him. Can you define patience and rebuilding uh, for Vancouver fans? They have no idea, Max. <laughs> Nothing. But, but ser- seriously, um, one, one more, if, if you don't mind. Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, expiring contract, goes to Boston. Boy, he just seems like a perfect fit for, for that team and its reputation. What's he going to do for the Bruins? Well, and, and Dylan Larkin was just talking about this, right? Like he said, you know, they're, they're gearing up for war and there's no one I'd rather be in that situation with than Tyler Bertuzzi. That's been one of the tragedies of the Red Wings rebuild is it, it's coincided with Tyler Bertuzzi's entire career. This is a guy who I think is made for the playoffs. You go back and you look at him at lower levels. He was the MVP of the AHL playoffs when he was there, raised his game in the OHL playoffs and the Memorial Cup when he was at that level. This is a guy whose game translates to the playoffs. He's still in his prime years, but he's getting toward the back of those prime years pretty quick. Um, I'm really happy for him in some ways that he's going to get to actually show that and do that on a team that can go deep. But but it's it's an all around game, right? He, he he can bring hard offense, which I think is some one of the hardest things to find in the NHL right now. Um, and and you know he doesn't fight as much as he did when he was a junior, but he did fight in his last game in Detroit after the Rebels got pushed around. I think it tells you a lot about him as a, as a player and and certainly as a teammate. This was great, Max. You're right there with Drance. Okay, don't sell yourself <laughs> yeah. short. It's way okay. smarter, way smarter than Drentz. <laughs> Outstanding. Max, I'll put that in my Twitter bio. Thank yeah. you. Short notice. Thanks for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. Hey, take care, guys. Have a good one. Max Boltman from The Athletic in Detroit.